So this one's kind of falling apart because I have it cut, but um, it would normally be a little bit more put together. So there are three general regions of the sheep brain and our brains too. So this main area here is the cerebrum, the cerebrum, and the outer part of the cerebrum that has these uh, hills and valleys, um, this would be the cerebral cortex, the cerebral cortex. Okay. <clears throat> this structure here is the cerebellum, the cerebellum. And this here is the spinal cord. The cerebrum is uh, separated into the right and left cerebral hemispheres. The right and left cerebral hemispheres. And the right and left cerebral hemispheres are separated by a much deeper groove and this is called the great longitudinal fissure. The great longitudinal fissure. The cerebrum and the cerebellum are also separated by a fissure, and that is shown here. And this is the transverse fissure. Transverse fissure. The hills and valleys that I mentioned earlier also have uh, names. So in general, we just call these uh, hilled regions. These collectively are called gyri, gyri. If we were just talking about one of these, we would just refer to it as a single gyrus, whereas gyri would be plural. And we have these grooves or these valleys that separate the gyri. And these valleys are the sulci. And if we are just looking at one particular sulcus, sul uh, if we're looking at just one in particular, we would call it a sulcus. So sulcus would be singular and sulci is plural. And those are only on the cerebral cortex of the brain. All right. The brain is separated into lobes according to their function. Uh, the proportionality of the different lobes in the sheep brain is significantly different than, than in the human, but um, you should know where they are and their basic functions. So um, let's go ahead and point out where those are. So in the front, we have the frontal lobe. Now, in animals, this is much smaller. In humans, this takes up, you know, a good, like, almost, like, almost half of the brain. But um, in animals, it just takes up um, just a small portion. So this is the frontal lobe, and this area takes care of planning, you know, higher functioning, being able to... Uh, uh, see the consequences of one's actions and that sort of thing. So what we kind of think of as making us uniquely human is located here in the frontal lobe. Now here at the top, <clears throat> which would lie under your parietal, uh, parietal cranial bones, is the parietal lobe. So the parietal lobe lies here and the parietal lobe this has your spatial memory or internal gps if you will um, this also has sensory processing information and uh, some memory function has some wonderful wonderful functionality here so that would be a parietal lobe and further back um, so you do have eyes in the back of your head so to speak because your visual processing actually occurs all the way back here in the occipital lobe. So this is the occipital lobe. Okay. Now laterally, <clears throat> so laterally we have the temporal lobes. Okay. Let me try to get a good view here. 
So the temporal lobes lie um, below where the temporal cranial bones would be. And this is important for, um, it has some memory function as well, but the temporal lobes are primarily known for auditory information processing. So auditory information processing. Okay, <clears throat> so since this wants to fall open, I think it's time for us to go ahead and look at some of these mid-sagittal uh, structures. So um, first let me point out um, three Vent ventricles that you need to know. So the ventricles are spaces in the brain that are going to be filled with cerebral spinal fluid. And the cerebral spinal fluid is the fluid that is constantly bathing the brain and the spinal cord. So you'll, we have one here. So this is the, the lateral ventricle the lateral ventricle, and here, here is the third ventricle, the third ventricle, and then just underneath the cerebellum, right here, is the fourth ventricle, the fourth ventricle. I'm actually going to flip this around to the other side because I think one of the structures is a little bit easier to see on this side. All right. So now let's go ahead and take a look at, at some of these structures. That's a little better. <clears throat> okay, so right here, the top of this loop, so you kind of see this thing that loops around. So basically from here all the way to the top of this loop, this area here, this is the corpus callosum. The corpus callosum. Now, the corpus callosum functions to uh, to connect the right and left cerebral hemispheres. So this way, the right and left cerebral hemispheres can communicate with one another. And now, the bottom portion here. This is going to be the fornix. The fornix. Now, if you look at the fornix and you just go just behind it, this side doesn't have a really clear one, but um, the other side does. But from here to here, you'll see a circular region which is just slightly, just slightly more pigmented than, than the surroundings. Okay. This is the thalamus. This is the thalamus. I think the other side has this one a little bit more noticeable. So for fun, let me flip this around and show you this one on this side too. Okay. All right, so this here, okay, so this is the corpus callosum on this side. This is the fornix. This one's really nicely defined. So this is the thalamus right here. This is the thalamus. Okay. Now, right behind the thalamus, um, on this side, the structure is actually missing. That's why I have this little hole here. So I'm going to switch this around again. I'm probably making me dizzy. <clears throat> Sorry about that. But um, I only have this, this structure on this side. So, so this structure right here, I'm going to try to move it a little bit so you can kind of see it. So this, circ this small circular region that's right behind the thalamus, this is the pineal body or pineal body, um, otherwise known as the pineal gland or the pineal gland. Okay. Now if I go just behind that, I'm going to see this structure here. Okay. So this structure on top, that's going to be the superior colliculus, the superior colliculus. And underneath, I'm going to have the inferior colliculus. So your superior colliculus is going to orient your head and neck to uh, bright light as a reflex. 
And the inferior colliculus orients your head and neck to sound as a reflex. So you can respond to danger qu quickly. <clears throat> okay, now your hypothalamus, so the thalamus is here. Okay, your thalamus is a relay center for uh, sensory information. And your hypothalamus is going to be under, hence the hypo, um, so it's going to be under the hypo or under the thalamus, and it'll be in this region here. It'll be the hypothalamus. Okay. Um, and just so you know, so in general, the area from like here, this lower area, from here to about here, this is the area of the brainstem that we call the midbrain. This lower area here, and then from if you look real carefully, you'll see that there is a bump. There's a bump on the underside. You'll see that bump a lot more clearly when we um, when we look at this from the inferior view. Okay. Where that bump is, which is going to lie just before just before the cerebellum, and that's the pons. Okay, so this this most of this area is going to be um, so from here to here. That's going to be midbrain. From here to here, okay, that's going to be pons. That's going to be the pons. Okay. Now from the edge of the pons down to about the end of the cerebellum, that is going to be the medulla oblongata. So from about here, oops there to there. Okay. And then after the medulla oblongata, from here down, that's going to be spinal cord. Spinal cord. There's one more structure I want to bring to your attention. So this is the cerebellum. Got that cut open. And I have this uh, branch-like tree structure in here that with white matter and that is called the arbor vitae of the cerebellum the arbor vitae of the cerebellum because so you can see these branching structures and that's what that is Okay, so cranial nerve one is quite a bit larger in animals than it is in the human. Um, so here in the sheep brain, this is cranial nerve one. This is the olfactory nerve, and this is what processes our sense of smell. Cranial nerve one. This structure here that crosses, this is the optic chiasm. And in front of the optic chiasm, we have cranial nerve two. This is the optic nerve, cranial nerve two. Behind cranial nerve two, we have cranial nerves three, one here. And one here. And this is the oculomotor nerve. The oculomotor nerve. Cranial nerve four is the trochlear nerve. And that one is going to be down here a little bit. And it's very thin. So I'm hoping, oh, let's see. I think you can see it from here. There we go. Right there. Tiny little thing. <laughs> okay, that is the cranial nerve four, which is the 
trochlear nerve. Okay, so the trochlear nerve is going to be down here, which is, there it is. I got it again. <laughs> See right there? Okay. Trochlear nerve. Okay. Um, the trochlear nerve is going to be underneath cranial nerve 5, which is much easier to spot. So uh, cranial nerve 5 is here. And on the other side, it's even larger. Okay, so that's this structure here. Cranial nerve five is the trigeminal nerve. The trigeminal nerve. Okay. And the last one you need to know is cranial nerve six. And cranial nerve six is also very small. And I'm going to try to tease it here so you can... And try to get it to poke up <laughs> really small and hopefully you can see them as I'm playing with them you see that here tiny little things okay. and cranial nurse nerve six is the abducens okay so um, I think the best way to learn these is to not panic about how small they are, but it's just to get really familiar with their locations. That way, whether you can see them or not, you will be okay on the practical. So, <clears throat> and they go in order, so that helps too. Now you should know not just the number of the nerve, but you should know the name too. But um, if you can at least know their number and location, then you can just, you know, work on your own on, um, on memorizing the names. So, so let's just go over that a couple of times to get you familiar. So one, two, three, four, way down there. And then five. Remember five is like a nice round number, right? Because we like to count by five. So just remember five is this nice big one here. Okay. So five. And then six is this teeny weeny one. And those are the only ones you need to know. Okay. So let's do that again. Okay. One, two, three, four. And then five is a nice big one. And six. And now it should this entire region is the midbrain. This is the midbrain, which is part of the brain stem. This area, this is the pons. So the pons, as you can see, is much easier to recognize from this view. So it's got this little bulge on it. So this is the pons. And after the pons, so from here to here. This is the medulla oblongata, the medulla oblongata. And then from here down, that's spinal cord. Okay. And that is the brain. Yay.